we are discussing the most influential art, the people, portraits, and process of Coindesk's most influential annual series. If you didn't know, Coindesk commissioned 10 artists to create portraits of these influencers with NFTs of the works available at platforms like Super Rare and Foundation. Up to 20% of the sales are going to charities of the artist's choice. And I'm joined now by two artists with me today, Federico Somi and Pindar Van Armen. And we're also joined by Adam Levin of Coindesk, whose startup company created AI-generated portraits of 40 people who won honorable mentions in the most influential series. I want to remind you that this is not financial advice and all views are our own. Welcome to the show, guys. Hey, thanks. How are you doing? Glad to have you all. Uh, I'm grateful for the artists in the space that have entered into it. It's such an amazing series. And I want to start off with you, Federico. Um, you have one of the most talked about portraits, the portrait of Elon Musk. And I wanted to ask you, what was the thinking behind uh, the portrait, some of the inspiration? And tell us a little bit about how you created it. Yeah, um, you know, the work uh, uh, took uh, almost a month to create. Uh, and basically, uh, I'm, uh, I, I'm a big fan of Elon Musk. Uh, and I wanted to create like uh, an art in which uh, he appeared as a sort of like a great thinker, like, you know, but at the same time, uh, I wanted to uh, represent him in a sort of like custom, like, you know, so in a very satirical way, he's dressed as uh, a character from Fritz Lang, 1924 movie, The New Belungen. And basically, the sequence starts with him, like, thinking, uh, like, Frederick Nietzsche. Like, you know, so he's very uh, involved in thinking. And suddenly, uh, when uh, uh, this, this spaceship, uh, you know, uh, leave, uh, um, leave Earth, he suddenly becomes excited like a child. So it's a very <laughs> metaphorical piece. Uh, we have uh, a two-screen and we have a frame in which uh, his hand painted that represent uh, pretty much the symbol of the collapse of the old war with the dollar bills in, uh, in uh, a close up. <clears throat> well, the process is very complicated. Like, you know, I use a combination of like uh, hand painted drawings uh, and then I create the character uh, using 3D software like Blender and I bring all of these assets that I develop inside the game engine called Unity and then I start to do the animation. Uh, sometimes I use motion capture. Uh, but in a way, like, you know, I wanted to create uh, an, art, an artwork that was very um, mysterious, uh, very enigmatic, like, you know, and at the same time, uh, you know, like representing uh, the great work that Elon Musk uh, uh, did uh, with all of his uh, amazing inventions. So I'm very honored to, to, to have done this. <laughs> Oh, yes. A, a beautiful piece indeed, and definitely a multidisciplinary uh, approach to it. Uh, tell us a little bit more about it as far as the uh, the charity you've chosen uh, and the NFT auction platform where this is actually available. So this piece is a, <clears throat> is a super rare, uh, a platform I've been working uh, for a while, and I choose uh, uh, the, pla the charity, the Giving Block Children Education Cause and Fund, you know, uh, this was my my thought. Beautiful, and that's what it's all about, right? Being able to give back as well as support yourself with beautiful art like we see here with Elon Musk, and uh, definitely a huge talk. Um, another huge uh, portrait that was talked about was the portrait of SBF, or SBF, sorry, Sam Bankman-Fried by Pindar. So I would love for, for you to Pindar to do the same, explain your process, some of the, the challenges for creating this uh, portrait, and uh, also as well, the platform and charity that you are supporting as well. No, oh, great. Yeah, no. First of all, it was uh, I was honored to paint uh, SBF. I, I didn't know much about him other than you know his crypto thoughts. But then I went deep when I was working on the portrait. And I just had to see a lot of his interviews, and I was actually touched by things he was saying about the future beyond uh, just the future of humanity beyond what he was talking about with crypto. For example, thinking that we have to there's more people are going to be born in the future than have ever existed. So it's our responsibility to like be stewards for this planet for them. And it's just, it was just amazing to get to know him on that level. And uh, it just made me try and come up with a gentle, soft portrait of him uh, using my robot's AI. And if people are familiar with my robotic work, you know, the AI can go crazy and, and do these GANs to put, you know, eyeballs on your chin. But on this one, I, I just wanted to go for something subtle, maybe, you know, evocative of old etchings. 
And and you can see the results right there. It painted over the course of four days. And the title is uh, 20. I deliberately did 29,000 and 21 brushstrokes, 29, because, you know, he's a billionaire before he's 29. 21 is big number in Bitcoin. Um, and so, you know, I try and get all this together and just make it an interesting portrait with AI. And like you see the, the portraits painting there. And the charity I chose, um, and actually I'm, I'm doing 100%. Everything, all proceeds of this, except for gas costs, are, are going to... Uh, are going to uh, the giving block uh, for uh, the giving block for some cultural children's art program, as well as an art therapy program uh, that's being piloted at a, a children's hospital that's using painting robots so that uh, patients that can't otherwise participate in the art therapy program can use these robots to paint. And, uh, and it's a really important program for me. And uh, that's why all of it's going to that one. Hey, great to hear. And so much thought put into it. Uh, you know, people will look at art, they may just see the picture, but the thought process between his age, between the big number of 21 million uh, Bitcoin, all of that put into the art definitely shines through and uh, definitely a great piece uh, and great use for, for charity. And Adam, uh, I want to uh, fix my error from earlier. Adam Levine uh, of Coindesk uh, has created a token, uh, startup company called Tokenly, uh, where they created 40 of the portraits AI generated. And just talk to us a bit about that process and what it was like uh, creating for the 40 most influential people who were runner ups. And I also want to thank you because myself was included, full disclosure, uh, in that list. So thank you for that amazing uh, picture as well. Talk, talk to us about that process. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, Isaiah. I appreciate the uh, appreciate the introduction there. Yeah, so I'm not an artist, transparently. I'm a technologist, and uh, I sort of fell in love with uh, sort of the state of the art as far as um, like artistic creativity coming out of AI, really as a way to amplify anyone's creativity and the ability for them to just take a couple of words that they want starting from an image or not starting from an image. In the case of the image that we're looking at here that we did for you, this one was evoking a more gallery painterly style with a cool color set. And, you know, we ran a couple of different versions and this one was darn good, you know? Uh, and so that's kind of really what this comes down to is that most of the process when we're talking about the creation of art is a very laborious process that involves a lot of individual decision making and takes a lot of time, right? A lot of effort. And kind of this new world that we're walking into, which I would say started at the beginning of this year with the release of the clip library from the open AI group. Basically what that did is it allowed for in a fully open source way for people to, um, for people to connect different types of AI creativity engines to this library that understands the word characteristics of imagery and the imagery characteristics of words and then allows those to be connected together to create things that can be very compelling. Uh, the stuff that we're looking at here, again, Coindesk specifically wanted kind of this very painterly gallery type style. Um, and they selected this particular style for basically everything we did. But we actually have dialed in so far about 1,500 different styles that range from everything from what we're looking at here to, you know, uh, like Picasso styles to all the way to, you know, like uh, Art Deco skyscrapers from 1939, where it then sort of reimagines an image of a person as an actual piece of architecture for some really compelling results. Um, and this is actually <laughs> the kind of less interesting side of the technology to me, it uses an engine called VQGAN plus Clip. But there's a much more exciting one that we've been working on that I think we have a video of that we might show later um, that's uh, called Guided Diffusion. And there's actually just an incredible amount. Yeah, we're looking at it here, we're watching this process. Uh, it's sped up in the video we're seeing, this is to create the door to infinity. Uh, but basically, it takes about three minutes, and that was really the only in input that I gave it. And it creates these very compelling, very high fidelity images. So that's again, like I've been in cryptocurrency since 2011. I've been full time Bitcoin since 2013. I started Tokenly back in 2014. So it's not a company I just started for this. I just fell in love with this technology and how powerful it is. And I've just been running as fast as I can to get something out there. Because again, like a lot of times, this is like, AI art is not new, but AI art in the hands of literally anybody who wants it, that's very new. And that's what my company is doing. Right. And let's talk about that a bit more. Um, you know, the fact that the intersection of the art world with the world that we, we have, me, you, others in the Bitcoin world are starting to see, the intersection of that with Web 3.0 with NFTs is extremely exciting. Um, and artificial intelligence, like you said, it isn't new, but it is something that is used a lot more. Uh, do you think that intersection pushes artists forward uh, more in the future than it would without? 
I think that this is this becomes a very controversial topic very quickly because I just told you that I could do in you know a couple of minutes with a couple of you know graphics processing units that are pretty expensive but not that expensive. You know I can do effectively what it takes an artist days or weeks or months to do. And so in some ways that does mean that it becomes harder to be an artist. But on the other side of things, it also means that you can have an artist who spends that time to create a single piece, whether it be a sculpture or painting or whatever, and then uses AI technologies like this to actually amplify their effort um, and to make it so that that one piece of work that took them a lot of time and effort to create can then have a thousand different versions of it that are created and effectively turn any one piece into a series of pieces. And the part that I've been particularly excited about is that, again, I kind of view this as like a self-driving car for creativity, right? You tell it where you want to go and it kind of figures out how to get from here to there. So the part that I'm most excited about with all of this is taking collectors, which is typically a passive role and turning them into a form of active collaborators, right? Where they're actually co-creating pieces with the artist whose piece they are creating the derivative off of. So I think that it, again, it lowers the barrier to becoming an artist because now you really just need to know how to articulate what it is that you want to create. And we've seen some fantastic examples of people who are really more of what I would describe as poets who feed like some just poetry or some prose into it and then create imagery that's very evocative of sort of the concepts in which they never would have created without it. And then on the other side, you have the amplifying effort where it takes, you know, the work of an artist and it makes it so that they can effectively have the equivalent of, you know, like a uh, an old master's, you know, uh, design production shop behind them, right? Where instead of having students who you have to pay and you have to house, instead you have, you know, a bunch of AIs that are basically there assisting you in the creation process. So again, like we may get to a point where this stuff actually presents a threat to artists, but I think up front, it's a huge boon to artists and an incredible force multiplier of, of the likes of which I've never seen before.